Well, again, everyone, it's been a little bit of a while since I did my last video update because I always had other things already in progress to edit and get done and get out and everything. I didn't want to take time away from something that was already trying to get done with the little bit of time I had between the days I had to work and all this type of stuff and the moments in time where I actually had the energy and time to get things done. So I just kept pushing it off to the side to get the videos done and the reviews done and all this other stuff. But it's a nice sort of middle area right now because just dropped the Beverly Hills Cop review. Guys are pretty much enjoying that thing. I hope you are. If you haven't seen it already, hit up the channel and check it out. The uh, Marked for Death commentary with Trent and I is up on Patreon as of Wednesday. So it'll hit YouTube on Friday. And you guys can enjoy that for the weekend. Next week, my friend Steve Frazier and I will get together and do some more Friday the 13th commentaries. We're going to do... Two of them back to back so we can have a, a little bit of a backlog just in case our schedules again uh, get a little bit jammed up and we can't get together. So we'll have two of them in the bag. We'll do Friday 13th Part 2 and 3 on Wednesday. So hopefully I'll have that out somewhere around Friday or whatnot to have you guys watch and enjoy and listen to all that type of stuff. And then Part 3 will come along a little bit later on. A little bit of spacing out, maybe a week or two buffer zone in there to just give you a little bit of time to catch up on everything and then enjoy the next installment in the commentary series and then we'll move on from there and see where things go with our schedules moving forward i got a couple things in the queue right now that i'm intending to get going on i'll be seeing spider-man homecoming sometime maybe late thursday probably friday i'll hope to get a review out to you guys by this saturday and so that's that's why I'm kind of holding off on just jumping into anything big right now. I'll have that for Friday to work on, deal with that. Then next week I can just kind of get going on something else and everything a little bit bigger. But I have a few ideas for more mini reviews swirling around. I haven't started on anything yet. Once I actually do fully start going on something, I'll drop a little hints here and there on social media for you guys. But uh, definitely some things in mind. Just kind of sit down and start watching some stuff. So I'll try to get through this as quickly as possible so I can hopefully start work on that tonight. But uh, right now I don't know what the f next full length, the uh, lo next long form Forever Cinematic Review will be. Like I said, just uh, recovering from Beverly Hills Cop and just letting things simmer on for the next couple of days. Get through the next thing and then look on to see what kind of stirs my interest from there on out. But I do have some media pickups here, and uh, I'll get through those things as uh, swiftly as possible, guys. But uh, after we did the first Friday the 13th movie commentary, which you watch on the old DVD, I don't have, didn't have any of the Blu-rays, and it, I was personally a little bit underwhelmed by the the old DVD quality of it from the, the original box that they put out years ago. So uh, I knew the local mall, the FYE, and the local mall had. Part 2 on Blu-ray for like 3 bucks. They had like 4 copies of this. So as soon as we were done with the commentary, I ran out and just grabbed this up. Because 1, it's one of my favorites of the franchise. And 2, even if I can just get at least one of the films on Blu-ray to enjoy in a higher quality standard, I'll feel better about myself and all the type of stuff. But uh, we'll see. I've been poking around some places because a lot of the Blu-rays are kind of out of print. They kind of... They went out, they had the... Blu-ray box set in 2013 and things kind of trailed on from there and the uh, partnership between like Warner Brothers and Paramount kind of dissolved and whatnot. The, the agreement ended so I think uh, Paramount's putting the first film, re-releasing it on Blu-ray is probably the same thing with new packaging in September but that's all I've really heard so far. No big uh, word about putting the rest of them out on Blu-ray all the sequels and whatnot but uh, at least got part two which I'll thoroughly enjoy it with Steve and everything and then we'll take a little break do part three and crank that up and just have a fun time of things uh, I definitely think we'll have a lot more engagement into the sequels because I think well one a little bit faster a little, the, the tempo the pace of the film is a little bit stronger you know, a little bit more the momentum of the films is a little bit faster and whatnot so it's more to get into more happening more interesting, colorful characters to kind of get into the whole thick of things and definitely some much more elaborate type of kills to really enjoy. So I think there's going to be a lot of meat to really dig into on the next few films at least. Especially 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And plenty of wild stuff too. But uh, 
I'm gonna go a little bit off the track here, but uh, I had to get the deluxe edition reissue of Purple Rain. This, the the like three CD and DVD collection here, because they had like just a single disc re-release and they had like a two disc release. I had to go the full way. One, I wasn't having a very good week, and this was coming out on that Friday, and I just it was the one thing I paid about twenty five dollars for it. It was well worth it because it really, it, it really helped me through the last day nicely of work and everything. And uh, I love this album. I, I'm i going to tell you guys, I have the remastered Blu-ray. I now have the remastered soundtrack with tons of extra extra tracks on here. Stuff that wasn't released from the film. Single edits, remixes, all this type of stuff. And I have a poster of Purple Rain. You're going to get a review of the film eventually. You will. It's going to come in a couple of months, though. Not going to jump on it right away because uh, my poster is in storage right now, and uh, if things go along on the course that we're all hoping things are going to go on for the next several months, we'll be clearing everything out of that storage unit and moving into a much bigger place. So hopefully that's going to happen. Things are still in progress of things going on. Whatever the case, <laughs> it's all, all getting hashed out. And uh, hopefully, August, September, we'll be out of this apartment into a nice new home. And I'll be, it'll be a little bit of downtime in there, but hopefully I'll build up a nice uh, catalog of stuff, nice cache of a couple videos here and there that I can drop in there and keep the, uh, the steady flow of things going. And you probably won't even notice that I've been gone for a few weeks and whatnot as uh, things get packed up and moved and five minutes away from here. So it's not a major shift or anything, but it's a nice place, and hopefully things are going to smooth out and we'll get there. But I uh, want to wait until that point so I can get get the th the frame poster out of the thing, hang it up on a wall where I don't have to worry about not damaging walls here in the apartment where we're renting and all this shit. So regardless of that, <laughs> we'll get to Purple Rain eventually. But uh, this was... I love listening to this. I just started listening the music on the remastered soundtrack sounds fantastic. Some of the other uh, clips of music on this thing, some of the remixes are really good stuff. I was really pleased to hear a couple of tracks from the film that were never released previously, so that's good stuff. I started watching the DVD, which is a 1985 concert, and it was fantastic, too. I mean, I just love the hell out of this film, so... <laughs> That's fantastic. It just, it, it, it's, it's a really nice packaging, too. This nice digipack with some wonderful stills of prints and everything. And you got a whole booklet in here of just lyrics and everything. And I could go through all this stuff right now. But um, just to say, if you enjoy Purple Rain, there's, like I said, there's three different editions out there depending on how much you really want to get. If you just want the remaster track, you can probably just grab it off of iTunes or something. But uh, it's all CD releases too, so I mean, this is wonderful. And uh, if you want to see the music videos, they're on the uh, DVD and Blu-ray set of the film and everything. So you can grab that and get the full Purple Rain experience overall. So, But moving back directly to movies and everything, because uh, in preparation for doing the mini reviews that I'm really getting started on here and everything... I was eyeing a couple of titles back and forth on a couple of websites because they're not available on Blu-ray and they're not easy to find type of things. And so I had to pick up uh, DVD copies of two different films. One is first film Blink, which I've watched many times on Netflix. It's still up there. You can check it out you got yourselves and everything. But uh, Madeline Stowe, Aiden Quinn, James Remar from the director of The World Is Not Enough, the Bond film with Pierce Brosnan. Uh, this is one I've seen quite a few times up on Netflix, and I always wanted to do a review on it. Uh, back in 2015, when I did the Netflix Roundup videos, where I just kind of selected a couple titles to always recommend, like, every month or two or whatnot, they kind of fizzled out for me. <laughs> this was one I wanted to keep doing, but every time I went ahead and did a video, I'd never get around to actually finishing editing the damn video. And so, I'm going to do a mini-review on this, eventually... But, uh, <clears throat> nice little film, nice thriller, uh, basically the pre premises, uh, Madeline Stowe is a woman who regains her sight and ends up being the only eyewitness to a crime, but your eyesight can't be trusted, and so it's a very interesting type of thriller there and everything, uh, 
really like it, really like it. So I'll, I'll get more into depth about that when I actually do the review. But I had to get this one because Rutger Hauer, Gene Simmons, Wanted Dead or Alive. I haven't seen this since like the late 90s, early 2000s when I was renting it on VHS one day. But I always remember liking it. I did come across a laser disc of it last year, months before I actually got my player. So I always, I always kept it in the back of my mind. But by the time I got the player, I think it would already been bought by someone else. But uh, got the DVD now. It's widescreen and everything, which is not the laser disc. Laser disc is not widescreen. So this is a uptick there in general quality and everything. And plus, again, uh, can't really. I mean, I can do the capture thing with the with the video card and everything, but the quality I'm going to get off of Laserdisc is not going to be as good as a ripped version from the DVD. So, trade-offs of everything. Uh, my own uh, little nostalgia thing down there of sorts getting that analog video goodness from my Laserdisc collection that's growing. Uh, but in regards to that, Wanted Air Alive action thriller, 80s. Again, Gene Simmons is the bad guy. Rutger Hauer is this leather-clad bounty hunter and everything. I just remember it being a just total, totally uh, big, over-the-top type of action film and everything. It's just uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be good watching this again. It has been so damn long, but I just remember always liking this when I saw it. But uh, speaking of Laserdisc, I finally did get The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, picked this up really, was this one, yeah, this is the one I picked up cheap. It was, uh, A New Hope I got for $15 off of, uh, Facebook group, the, the LaserDisc Forever Facebook group. I got this on Half.com for, like, $8, which is a hell of a, hell of a bargain and everything, because, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I mean, like a month ago, I was over at a Half Price Books, and they were selling every, any Star Wars this they had, $35. Which is a robbery. It was really kind of robbery and everything. I mean, I just went to another uh, one, that, that, another half price books where they had the uh, the pen and scan versions. They were selling those for like eight dollars. So it was like this other place is really price gouging the shit out of people, and they're not selling, as far as I'm aware. So uh, I, I was faced that this, this was already after I got this. I was faced with getting Return of the Jedi. But I wasn't going to pay $35 for it. I didn't even pay $35 for the other two discs that I have in total. So uh, I'm, I have I have an open window to get Jedi. I'm just waiting to decide what I want to spend my money on at certain points in time. Because my list of stuff is growing. And the prices are going down on certain things that I want to get. But uh, a lot of Blu-rays I want to grab my hands on. But uh, prices are just kind of sticking in the same area. There's no price drop, so I might might be getting Amazon Prime for Prime Day just to see if there's anything that goes on sale. We'll just see. But uh, I finally got this in widescreen and everything. I watched it, and I think I've gotten used to the, the THX remastered version, that the masters that were used on the uh, Definitive Collection in the 1995 re-releases because the color palette of this transfer was very warm. A little bit of yellows here and there, stuff like that. So it's like, even with the, even when I changed the the color temperature on my TV to cool, it still looked too warm for my uh, for what I've gotten used to watching it as. So I think I might stick to just watching the 1995 versions, which I have on VHS. I also have it on the old uh, the 2006 bonus discs, DVDs, and everything. So I might stick with that. Just not hot on all the. Uh, digital noise reduction they put on those those masters and everything so it's, it's always that trade-off type of thing but uh because you got so many like very bright white type of environments such as hoth and then a lot of the interiors on cloud city and whatnot just like the stark whiteness on the thx remasters where they did kind of adjust the color timing a little bit and just looks more pleasing to me this with a little bit of yellow tinge going throughout it didn't didn't mesh with me in general, but it, it was still a good tra transfer. It was still sharp, nice and clear, and everything it was really good. So uh, I sat and watched the whole thing, and the discs were perfect. There was not a not a problem at any point in time with any of the discs. So getting this for eight bucks was a steal indeed. And uh, hopefully, I'll or manage to grab my hands on Jedi. I have a friend who was looking was looking to actually he had the full set. 
the full trilogy of this these releases from CBS Fox that I didn't find out until I was looking for Jedi. So still that open door there to grab that when I want to. I just gotta give him a price what I think is a fair choice to present to him. So just <laughs> like I said, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of Blu-rays I want to grab my hands on. It's like I'm pay, I'm put money on this, put money on this. What site do I want to go to? Is it, is it better price on eBay somewhere? Is like going crazy here. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, regardless of that, guys. So that's pretty much all there is in terms of media pickups. Uh, it's been a little while, but I haven't done as much. I've, I've done a fair amount of looking around, but I haven't done much buying of things because I just haven't found what I was looking for, or just uh, just a little hesitant to, to drop as much money as I've been seeing on some things. Some things I want to pay like dirt cheap prices and they're not quite there. They're not easy to find. Other stuff is like a Scream Factory or a Shout Factory release which is usually hovering around that $20 range. I want to get something some stuff from Warner Archive which they just announced the Batman Mask of the Phantasm Blu-ray which I do want to get my hands on but the price is somewhere around like $22 right now pre-order and everything so it's like all, all the places I want to order something from, the price is just a little higher than I really want to pay for, especially when you cal calculate in shipping. So that's another reason why I might get uh, a one month uh, Amazon Prime subscription and just get that free shipping type of stuff and just dive into everything. But we'll see where things go in my next paycheck and see how things work that way. So uh, I'm do I am eyeing and stirring around ideas for Forever Horror Month. There's at least one film I'm definitely intent on getting around to which is the 1978 invasion of the body snatchers but uh, as things will go along in the next couple of weeks I'll start to fashion around what I really want to do with it and not, not, now that I have the mini reviews I can probably get as much done as I really like to always like to get it, just charge for it do it ten tons of shit just compact everything in there but I feel like if I could do a limited number of long form reviews and maybe two or three mini reviews and throw in some commentaries that'll be more than enough I think so I'll just see how things kind of ebb and flow for the next couple of weeks and see where things stand and decide what I want to get my hands on what's worth getting my hands on at this point in time and see what we're going to do with the channel going forward so uh things are not going anywhere guys so I have commentaries the full length reviews I have everything else blu-ray news stuff will eventually will Blu-ray news videos come around when I feel like there's enough important type of news to, to uh, report on. It's like, again, there's the Batman Mask of the Phantasm sort of thing, but it's a bare-bones disc, so I talk about it for about 30 seconds and move on to something else. So it's like, I, I need a certain amount of meat of something to, uh, to discuss or whatnot. So it's like, okay, the put on Blu-ray, there's no special features. There's not much to discuss about it. Uh, but I'm definitely intent on getting it because it's a fantastic film. Uh, I just saw, uh, I ne I've never, I've watched a little bit of this film, but uh, The Taking of Beverly Hills, which is uh, one of those uh, late 80s, early 90s uh, diehard clone type of films starring Ken Wall, Lee Ving from Clue and everything. He's the bad guy in the film. Uh, just this in a police force that takes over Beverly Hills and just ramshackles everything, just gonna rob Beverly Hills blind uh, with this like uh, wild plan and whatnot. It's supposed to be a really kind of cheesy action film. I once found like a widescreen rip of it, probably from like a laser disc or something, but I never got around to actually watching it. But Kim Lorber is actually putting it out on Blu ray later on this year, so I didn't announce any features, but it's like. It's kind of cool. I don't think it ever got a DVD release, so finally getting a digital version of that would be kind of neat. But uh, regards to that, I didn't I haven't seen much of anything. Again, Shout Factory has not been announcing a whole lot of things lately. It's kind of disappointing this whole year. They really haven't made a lot of big announcements of anything. They kind of doing a lot of little things here and there that haven't really struck my interest personally. I'm sure a lot of people are probably interested in like Lawnmower Man and various other things. But I haven't seen them make a lot of big splashes like they've had in years past. Maybe that will change when they do their announcements at the Comic Con. But uh, regardless of that, guys, uh, that's all I have for you this time. That's just me rambling on about random shit. But uh, like I said, it's been a while, so I haven't done ram rambling nonsense in a while. So it's, it's there you go. But uh, uh, 
go think of something else. The guys in Hemi are working on their next studio album right now. They're in the studio recording shit. Um, I, I hope we can do something video related for all that type of stuff. But as, again, it's, it's, it's always a problem because Steve and, and Trent are all both out of, out, out, out of state right now on vacation shit. So I'm stuck here doing nothing. <laughs> But uh, regards to that, because uh, I hope we can do something video related for Hemi, but it always feels like once you get to July, if you don't have a lot of plans set up for the rest of summer, things just kind of go nowhere. I haven't been to any concerts, I haven't done anything, I, I've seen like one film this summer or whatnot, it's like, things are not going in a direction where I've got a lot of time to work with. They go out and do just random shit, you know. It's, it's, so I, I hope once they get the studio album done, I hope that we can arrange to do some kind of a music video or something like that to just put that thing in there because we haven't done a fully produced, completely dedicated shoot for a music video since 2008. It's a long time. I've edited a whole bunch of like live footage videos and everything, but we haven't done like go out and shoot an actual video since like the first year I was with these guys. So. Uh, I know Eric, my friend, uh, DP and everything, a cinematographer I've worked with, a couple of different films. Uh, he was really interested in doing something this summer with me, doing some kind of project, just film something. But I haven't heard from him uh, since um, middle of May or whatnot, so nothing's happened there. So I was hoping if we got the album done and we could arrange something, all of us could get back together, right back to where we were before, and just blow things out of the water with a new video. So... But this is going on long enough, guys. We're past like 24 minutes or something like that. Regards to that. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for commenting, hitting the like buttons, sharing links around, all this type of stuff. It helps to grow the channel because I can't do it on my own. I can still produce content, but there's not people out there who are engaged with the channel, interacting with the channel, doing stuff to just kind of manipulate that bizarre YouTube algorithm shit. If you do a lot of, do comment a lot, you do hit the like buttons a lot, that brings the videos up more in the searches and gets them featured in different places and recommendations and stuff like that. So do as much as I can with all the tags and all this type of stuff and push it out in the social media avenues and everything. But it's you guys that help expand the channel, build it, get more people to see it and just get that subscriber base pushing forward so without you guys I'm here talking to my fucking self so thanks guys for absolutely everything you've done if you've been here for a week or two if you've been here for three years whatever it is thank you for being here I do thoroughly appreciate it, guys I just I just want you guys being here I don't care how it is where it is as long as you're here watching the stuff and you're enjoying what you, what you see that's all I ask for Steve and Trent are the same way they enjoy seeing the comments on the commentaries and all the type of stuff. People are sharing the stuff around and just engaging totally. And all the commentary videos, you can hit up their uh, Twitter tags and everything, their Twitter handles, and tweet to them if you want to. Say, hey, I really liked you guys on this commentary. I like what you guys are doing. Go ahead and uh, hit up Steve and Trent and everything. See what they want to engage you with because they're, they're excited to do that. They want to see that interaction too because they don't always get a chance to jump on the comment section. So if you want to hit them up on Twitter or whatnot, definitely go ahead and do that. They would very much enthused, they bring a big smile on their faces. So I see the comments. Don't know how much they get to, especially with their busy schedules. So I'm definitely paying attention. But if you guys want to reach out to them, they would thoroughly enjoy it like hell. So thanks guys for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.